welcome to another vlog and in this video, I will be making my first cut. But how? I have absolute zero experience of both making and flying a kite. So I called Manong here, uh, wearing a yellow shirt, to assist me in carving the lukai as the kite's frame. When I was little, you know, as a typical Filipino kid, I always dreamed of flying a kite, but no one taught me how to do it. So back then, during summer or winter days, I would easily get jealous of those who were the same age as me, um, who were able to fly their own kites at sugarcane fields, also known as Katuban in Visaya, which is just in front of a residence at Tanhai City. Going back to this video, after Manang had carved all the lukais, I listened to his instructions how to make the frame. Firstly, he instructed me to do two crosses below and above the centerpiece and tie the two lukais together using a yarn. The yarn that I used was actually found in sako bags. The second step of making the kite's frame was to create the wings or flaps of the kite and Manong did this by tying the ends of two crosses each side. For the bottom part of the kite, a heart-shaped flap or wing was also made just for aesthetic purposes. Afterwards, I was then in charge of tying all the pieces together by cross tying or is it cross nothing? I don't know. Anyways, when I was tying, I made sure that these were tight. Manang also told me to make sure that these attachments of the parts of the frame were not loose to prevent a non-sturdy tight frame. His comment was more on for practical use because he's an expert in making kites and knowing how to fly one. At this moment, I was starting to get frustrated because Manam told me to redo the tyings because the two crosses, the first steps, were kind of loose and I hated staying long outside because of the intense heat that I was feeling. <laughs> but at the same time, I was enjoying the process of making the kite because I was learning as well how to make one. And like I said, it was my dream to make a kite and now I am being taught by Manong how to make one. So hashtag dream fulfilled. <laughs> so at this stage, I was doing the final pieces of the frame. I don't know what it is exactly cool. It looks like a mini hat or an antenna. Yeah. And then a cross was also made in the middle of the flaps so that when the kite is covered, it will not tear easily. After long hours of making the frame, I started covering the kite the next day by using Japanese paper. I chose the color orange because I like its vibrant color. And I pasted the Japanese paper using rugby but only with little amounts because due to the paper's um, thickness, it's actually very thin so I was afraid that the rugby might melt the paper. After cutting the edges of the paper and shaping it according to the flaps of the kite, I pasted it on the sides to prevent an untidy look. I also covered the heart-shaped flap with the same color of Japanese paper.
now here comes the final step of making my kite, which is decorating. I decided to paint my kite with Okir designs, which by definition is a term for geometric and flowing designs, often based on an elaborate leaf and vine pattern. These motifs can be usually found in Maranao, Maguindanao, and Muslim-influenced artwork, especially in the southern Philippines and in some parts of Southeast Asia. At this stage of decorating, I first drew an outline of the ochre designs by applying white paint. I also looked at Google for some references of the designs, but I assure you that I did most of my designs on my own with the help of my, I don't know, partially creative mind. You see, I am not expert in painting, but I enjoy the process of painting because it's very therapeutic for me. And as you can see in the background, uh, the sky is getting cloudy, which means that sooner or later in this video, it will rain. Hearing the slow taps of raindrops on the ground while painting outdoors soothed my mind and somehow sets up the mood. So at this moment, I was actually enjoying my time painting my kite. After drawing the white outlines, I added some color to my designs like green, blue, yellow, and red. Essentially, I used all the poster paint colors available except for black to my decorations for the kite. So this is the final look of my kite, however, I noticed that something was lacking. Then I remembered that I saw some unused ribbons. These were actually already old ribbons that I found in the storage room at our convenience store. Not that one. After finding this delicate size yellow ribbon, I used them, I glued them using rugby at the end of the kite as tassels. And after some final touches, I was done making my kite. Although the designs looked kind of mediocre for some, but I am actually proud of myself being able to make my very own first kite. Thank you.